Hey guys, uh, tonight we're taking a look at the Moss Tactical uh, Rib Cage Chest Rig. All right, so I currently have it on top of uh, some body armor uh, because I, I really like the idea behind this thing. It's well made. Um, I just have one concern and it's just the way the, the shoulder straps are fitting. Now, I've been playing with the tension on the back and, and trying to to really dial that in. Um, but I think part of what is, is happening here is the, um, I, it, it keeps wanting to kind of, to slide out. Now, I, I don't think that's a huge issue, um, especially if you're not trying to layer this on top of something else, because it's, it's not going to pinch your neck, um, uh, from, from trying to do that, right? Like it's naturally moving away. And I think if I loaded this thing down with a little bit more weight, especially on the back end and, and kind of gave some tension, I think it would sit um, okay. But if you're a skinnier dude uh, and you don't have um, shoulders, not that I necessarily have big shoulders, I feel like you may run into some issues where you can't tighten this thing up enough. And, and some of that may be from the height on the front shoulder strap here, which I haven't gone that far yet as to, to, to tighten this up. Um, but I may, I may tweak that and we'll see how this plays. But I just kind of wanted you guys to see how it sits on top of armor. And, and this might, the bulk here might be throwing you guys off a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so it, it rides well. I can get the height where I want it. I'm still still playing around with the, the shoulder straps and seeing just how they work. So let's get this thing on the table and see kind of what goes into it because this is very much uh, potentially just a me issue and different body sizes uh, over more extensive armor. If you've got a pack tied into this, like all of those are gonna change your experience with it and you may never never notice this kind of desire to, to spread out that I'm seeing. So let's get it on the table. Hey guys, real quick. So in, in trying to do my due diligence here and not paint anything in a negative light that doesn't, doesn't necessarily deserve it. Um, I, I tighten up the, the angled strap here a little bit and then, uh, the back strap, uh, as well. And I got it now where the movement on the, on the shoulder straps is pretty minimal. Uh, I don't feel like I don't feel like they're coming as as straight up as they could, um, but I don't. I also don't feel like they're in a wrong in the wrong spot right now. Uh, they're sitting sitting right on kind of the meaty part of my shoulder, uh, so I, it's a it's a good comfortable spot, and they're not they're not moving too much. Granted, I don't I don't have any weight on here, um, but one one caveat that I still want to throw out is I've got it fairly high, um, so if you prefer to to wear your chest rig lower. Um, potentially you want to use as much real estate as possible. Uh, you're going to start running into issues with stuff in your armpits. Um, and that's just where it, it has kind of its happy medium, uh, for my build. So that's not saying it's going to be that way for everybody. Uh, but I did, I mean, you can see on the rear there, how much slack I took out of that strap. Uh, and I'm a pretty average sized guy. So if you're smaller, um, perhaps tread lightly. Uh, if you're bigger than me, you're, I don't think you're going to have any issues. If you're wearing it over armor and you've got some time to really dial it in, I think you'll be pretty happy with the sizing. Uh, I do feel like this portion of the strap uh, starts out longer than it needs to. Uh, so there's, there's another inch of vertical adjustment that I could take out of this, which would pull the, the H harness up a little bit more. Uh, but as a 5'10 guy, I feel like this could be, uh, there could be more room for vertical adjustment. Uh, everything on here could, could start a little bit higher, uh, so you'd have less dead space here. And then uh, any additional dead space would be kind of at the tail end of the strap. So if you needed to let it out to clear armor or to ride it really low so that you can um, potentially put a cover garment on over it or something like that, I feel like that, that tweak could be made. Now there is room here to, to drop this down a little bit. Um, I'm kind of in the middle position here, but I feel like a couple more positions upwards would be would be value added, right? So now let's get on the table and, and really take a look at the construction on it, because I do think it's worth uh, kind of working through what they did with it, and it's an interesting approach to a chest rig. 
All right, so I've kind of got a, a good bit of clutter on the table here. I apologize for that. But I've been playing with different um, pouches on here, different attachment methods, trying to see if the skeleton design of this causes any comfort issues. Uh, I didn't suspect that it would do anything outrageous because I'm, I'm pretty used to skeletonized cummerbunds on plate carriers and whatnot. And I haven't felt a lot of discomfort um, on the sides of my body based on that, but my, my experience is also a little skewed. Um, you know, all of my recent experience with it has been with, uh, side armor, uh, both soft and, and rifle plates. So any, any potential, you know, weaving issues that would come into play is kind of negated by that. That said, I, I didn't run into any issues, whether I was using snapped pouches, um, tuck tabs, laser cut options. The one thing that I haven't I haven't put a lot of time into just because I, I do not like them in the first place as malice clips. Um, but there are plenty of, you know, replacement options should you need to use a pouch that would use malice clips. So there's the WTF, uh, laser cut straps. Um, some of the guys like Arctic Technical Gear might make their own straps if, if needed. Mal uh, Velcro one wrap uh, can suffice for mounting just fine. And it would probably mount pretty well on here. And I'll, I'll walk you through kind of why I suspect that. Um, so there's a lot of options. Even the Gen 2 mouse clips are much better. Um, so there's a lot of options to avoid mouse clips, even if you have pouches that use them. All right. So looking at uh, kind of the construction on here, again, I don't know of anybody else making a chest rig uh, exactly like this or really anywhere close to it. Uh, some of the closest options that I can think of are the Cry Airlight. Uh, it's not really skeletonized but it is kind of through the wonders of laser cutting however it's not a split front um, so off the top of my head and I, I very easily could be forgetting something out there I'm not aware of anything set up quite like this um, so what you get is a a two-piece chest rig I verified pricing uh, before shooting this so just the chest rig portion is $150 and then if you add the harness it's another 50 so the the setup as I have it right now is uh, $200 setup. And I do want to say uh, Moss Tactical sent me this to, to make a video on. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if they expect it back. Um, but as, as, as well as I can, this is uh, a bias-free um, you know, overview of this thing and my experience with it. All right, so uh, it's a split front chest rig. The, the front connection is with first rear tubes, and it is uh, eight columns wide on each side by, by three rows high. Um, the eight columns on me is not an issue, uh, even without armor on underneath. That said, the last couple columns are getting pretty far back there, so you would definitely want to weigh what you're mounting there if you're my size or smaller. Um, but I do appreciate that the, the footprint is there if needed. And if not needed, it kind of helps provide some structure. Um, it would be interesting to see if, if after uh, Moss Tactical gets some feedback, if they, they make a smaller cut down version of this, I could see a six column or, or, or 12 total um, option being pretty popular. Maybe even so far as a 10 column, depending on what dudes want to mount. <clears throat> but I can definitely see that smaller guys may have issues using this chest rig, especially if they don't stack it on top of armor for whatever reason. Right. Uh, what is a little interesting here is you would think that it is structured and it, it definitely behaves like it's structured. Um, so I, when I first took it out of the package, I kind of assumed there would be some Tegris in here. And that doesn't appear to be the case. I, I could potentially be missing some. But these vertical um, stabilizers here, which do their job quite well. I mean, you can see, like, we can bunch this up if we want to. So if you had some, some kind of out-of-spec uh, tuck tab mounting, you could end up pinching that up a little bit. Um, but even though this isn't Tigris and is kind of just, I don't even know what this is. It's like a rubberized webbing almost. Almost like if you took a single layer of webbing and just wrapped electrical tape around it, it kind of has that amount of strength to it. Um, but it's doing its job well. 
it, it keeps everything spread out and just the the two pieces with the the front connection is doing its job just fine i think if you made that any stronger vertically you could run into some issues especially if you weren't mounting pouches this far back with that kind of being a a hot spot um the 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 lateral um structure here i you it would obviously make it more expensive to make um i think even just the top uh row having a tegris liner uh would be a, an interesting thing to try i don't necessarily think that it's needed especially if you're using pouches all the way around right um the the harness here I will we'll take this off and get it a little closer. Uh, it has, you can see some, some adjustment in height on this surface mount side release buckle. Uh, so if you needed to like really extend this thing out and make it longer, you could swap that out for a regular repair buckle and just mount it on the bottom. You could even muscle it maybe into this, this bottom loop if you had to. That would be a real struggle. Um, and that would only get you another quarter inch of height. But if you wanted to move it all the way down so that the connection was actually taking place down here. You could definitely do that by swapping out those buckles. Um, as it sits right now, it's pretty nice because everything kind of lays flat. And, and the way I currently have it sized, all of the hardware is supported by harness uh, because I do have that leftover little piece on the bottom there. Like I said in the intro though, I definitely think there's room to give you more vertical adjustment. Uh, this this side release buckle uh, facing up is kind of the one limiting factor there. It's it's to tie into to backpacks or back panels if you want to. And you don't want that getting into your shoulder pocket or potentially trying to curve over your shoulder as you mount something. So I could see that potentially leading into issues. But if you if you needed to, you know, raise everything up a little bit. You could always bring this back down as long as you, you know had room between these two buckles um, depending on how your your sizing worked out in my case it it wouldn't cause any real issues because i'm, I'm looking to bring everything further down um, i think too much of my adjustment needed to come from just the back strap instead of balancing it with the front and that was where some of that um my contention came into play. In the end, it worked. Um, I just think I would rather eat up some of this length than than all of this length. Right. <clears throat> uh, so we talked about the, the first of your uh, tube there for your split front capability. I like the way that's done. I'm, I'm not a big guy. Uh, so in my experience with, with split fronts, the more gap you have in the front, just like the less important stuff you can put up front, um, notably uh, ammunition, right? Um, so I, I like the way this is done. I, I like split fronts when I use them for the ability to take them off essentially like a jacket and not have to wiggle my way out of the chest rig. I don't necessarily need a, a large unusable gap there. So uh, zippers, fixed mounted side release buckles as close together as possible or tubes are, are my preferences and i think the tube in this case works better than the the other two options uh, if you had this thing sized very specifically to you i could potentially see the issue where the the kind of the vertical offset that you need to engage the tube could uh, force you to struggle a little bit in donning it and doffing it but I, I haven't experienced any issues, no matter how much stuff I put on here and what I layered it on. And uh, I, I thought it was, it was perfectly fine. All right. I did want to um, put this double SR25 pouch here to show you. And I, I had the mags in there in the intro and realized it looked a little, a little goofy and bulky there. Um, but just to show you, like, this is a fairly aggressive two-column pouch. And it doesn't overhang the buckle much at all. So you could absolutely run any two ammunition pouches that you wanted butted right up against this thing and still have access to the pull tab here and still be able to use the split front functionality without um, running into each other. So there's a, a pretty perfect amount of gap there, uh, in my opinion. All right. <clears throat>
top. So we'll flip this over and you can look at how cleanly the pouch mounts. So I'm a huge fan of the, the Paraclete tuck tabs, the way that uh, engaged with the rib cage. It's essentially a flat surface there and there's, there's really not gonna be much hot spot there. Potentially this, this seam here, uh, but on the front of the body, there shouldn't be a lot of tension pulling that, you know, around a corner or anything like that. So I really like the way the Paraclete pouch is engaged with this. The, the snap pouches, you only have the snap up against your body, and that's not a huge issue, especially on the bottom where, you know, without this being super structured, it has room to kind of tilt away from you a little bit if needed. Uh, and then additionally, it's lined with Velcro. So if you wanted to use some of the, the first spear Ragnar pouches or any other hook backed pouch, you could um, if you needed to do kind of a double layer setup here. With that in mind, though, I was playing around with this a little bit, and I my initial uh, idea was to, to put 10 speeds in here so that ammunition could be inside. And then if I you know had some obnoxious need to have just a bunch of not ammunition on the outside of this thing, that that possibility would still be there. The way that the hardware kind of lines up and the way things are sewn, it's not quite as intuitive as I would have thought. So this first column is dead on the inside, which is okay. Um, and then the, the second two are kind of interfered with by the way the, the harness engages here. So really you need to be at a minimum two two columns away. You could you could make this one work for ammo, I think, but ideally three columns away from, from the front before you really have good access to whatever's internal. And at that point you have um, one, two, three, four, five columns to play with. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because at, at that point you're, you're really doing some chest rig origami to, to piece everything together. Um, but it is something to be aware of. Uh, should you want to use pouches internal on here, because it is truly skeletonized and not laser cut uh, with, with just one piece of material, you can stack pouches um, without too much issue. So the, the gap between layers here on the, on the skeleton portion, uh, again, this is not a great example because of where the harness plugs in. But the only issue you're going to run into is that you both mounting um, straps are, are using the same pass through. So if you had something with really bulky uh, straps, kind of like the end of the, the paraclete straps where you have the, the tuck tab and the, the ribbon on there, down here it would get a little busy. But up top you wouldn't have any issues with it. So you could have um, essentially whatever pouch you want inside and a pouch outside without any any issues um, and that that might work well with 10 speeds it might work well with radios just so you can free up some space on the outside potentially magazines um, in, in pouches other than 10 speeds but beyond that I'm not I'm not really sold on what you would want um, maybe a map pocket or something like that like I think um, Green Force gear or now L4 performance has some some Velcro backed pouches, uh, like admin type pouches that might work if you only need, you know, like flat storage stuff, flat storage space or whatnot. Um, but you really need like an open top pouch that either, either you're, you're using it for something very flat or something that's going to be able to find its own volume, uh, as you retrieve it and, and reinsert it. Um, and, and, and magazines in a 10 speed are, are one of those examples, right? Like if you had to re-index a magazine in a 10 speed, you could. <clears throat> the, uh, the back end of the, the harness here or the, the chest rig, there are three buckles. Um, so we kind of already talked about the, the side release buckle coming up, up top on the, um, the shoulder strap. You also have a one inch surface mount buckle on the middle row on the back. So if you, I, I don't know if Moss Tactical makes a dedicated pack for this. I, I looked briefly, they didn't mention it in the description of the rib cage um, and I didn't catch it on the website. So if I missed it, my apologies to everybody. 
but you would you would just need you know whatever is going to tie into two vertical side release buckles and two horizontal uh, side release buckles and then you're going to have to play with kind of the the ride height on there which is uh, i would imagine that's going to cause you um significant heartache trying to to really nail down that sizing regardless of it being something that Moss Tactical sells or or anybody else like you're going to want and you're you're stuck with your your side to side connection there like you you can't really control ride height too much unless you have the ability to move your buckle on your your back panel vertically um but you're definitely going to want a lot of adjustment uh, coming over the top of the shoulder on, on whatever panel. And I'm envisioning uh, Extreme Gear Labs had kind of a paraclete back panel-like looking thing that they made for a uh, chest rig and, um, or, or armor, I can't remember, but it connected with side release buckles. And I can, I can imagine that working with, well with this concept, especially if you're using it over armor. Um, but it was very much like an assault panel. So an assault panel on a chest rig doesn't, doesn't make a ton of sense unless it's over armor. Um, something like a, a Kefaru E and E pack, you could maybe make play with this, um, but you're going to want something that that either doesn't have to have shoulder straps, or has shoulder straps that are terminated with a side release buckle and a lot of adjustment somewhere in there, because the odds of the everything just kind of falling into place correctly um, or being anywhere close right off the bat is pretty minimal. Um, hopefully Moss Equival is cooking something up that's going to provide that flexibility. But again, I, I don't know. Um, that said, I do like this chest rig. I think the the ability to, to provide some ventilation there, you know, if you're um, hunting with this thing or or riding in vehicles for long periods of time the the skeletonized asset to it provides uh plenty of airflow without potentially trapping heat like spacer mesh can do depending on how the spacer mesh is set up i like the ability to to velcro stuff in here if you need to i did play around with uh putting a dangler on here it works okay um having just two two inches of velcro continuity there i wasn't a huge fan of but if you can keep this thing fairly snug and your dangler is is not extremely heavy you won't have any issues with that um a a molly mounted dangler would be a, a useful option because you could hang that off the inside and then you know mount to the the, the overhang there if you needed to i'm trying to think off the top of my head of who who has a setup like that i don't i don't know but I, I know i've seen them out there um so they they for sure exist uh you could potentially slap uh, a placard in here depending on how the placard is set up so if you had um like the cry stretch panel that could just slap in here fairly well and you you'd have the ability to adjust it wherever you needed to so you could you could mount it kind of half on this column and clear the shoulder strap if you needed. Uh, and that would, that would kind of fit. It would overhang a little bit. But like a, a two-cell Velcro-backed pouch on here, I could see adding some value. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the whole piece to, to Molly chest rigs in general, let alone ones that provide even more complicated options, is you just got to play with what fits. Um, there's, you, you're working with a fairly limited amount of space. This one is, is 16 columns, so it's, it's one of the bigger ones out there, but you're still working with like essentially no vertical capability because it, you, know, you could have a frag here and, and a frag hanging off the bottom, but these are really built for your, your six inch tall pouches or, or one shorter pouch that just doesn't use a row. Um, so you, you do have to play with it a little bit, but I think this thing gives you a lot of options. I think the price is is pretty fair. Um, you know, no no pouches included, no organic storage. One hundred and fifty dollars starting point isn't outrageous compared to anything else out there, uh, but it is a, a higher end investment. Um, but again, it, it, there's a lot of options here, and if it works for you, it works for you. I think it's a cool concept, and I think there's definitely room to to tweak it. Um, you know, potentially scale it down, scale it up, 
However, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe find a way to, to make kind of the, the back continuous, um, so that your, your back panel could be Molly mounted and then you just secure the, the top of it with a side release buckle. That would definitely be something that would make sizing easier. Um, it would, it would provide some structure, it would give you a full wrap around, and then you could have somehow have that, that sizing adjustment built in there. Um, I think that's an option, but there's nothing wrong with this as, as the way it sits, aside from the little bit of struggle I had with the shoulder straps. And, and that maybe is just like, don't buy the shoulder straps, buy the, the rib cage itself, and then figure out some straps that work for you. So, uh, really long video on a chest rig, but I think there was a lot to talk about here, and uh, I appreciate your time, guys. Thanks.